Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Out of Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table we have another Star Wars Metal Earth model from the newest movie, The Last Jedi. We have the Resistance have the Ski Speeder. Now this looks reminiscent, partially by name but partially by look and partially from what I've seen in the previews, a little bit like maybe an evolution of the the speeders that they used in episode one where Anakin raced and whatnot so it kind of looks like a single engine cockpit to one side odd little speeder I don't know if that's exactly what it is it does have a picture on the back of of it kind of sitting in a sandy area so maybe well ski speeder so maybe that's not sand that snow that does have kind of a whitish look to it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's open this up and see what's inside and how complicated it's going to be to put it together. The Resistance Ski Speeder. Tearing it open, we have our sheets, two of them to be exact, and a piece of paper. Two pieces of paper. Let's start with the first sheet. Page one, and go quickly over what we usually have here the Star Wars logo, the Metal Earth logo, a line drawing of the model, and one of the sheets 360 view, QR code you can scan, or the website you can just type in on your computer. And then we have one of the pieces from the model and an explanation of insertion holes, fold lines, and insertion tabs. We have the legend. Dark E points at something, it's pointing at a not an engraved side or section. Non E points at a non engraved side or section, so you know which way to put the parts. The pointer finger is trying to get your attention to something, it's an attention point. It may be line up these tabs this way or these parts this way, or it may have words that go with it to explain what you're paying attention to. Sometimes you just kind of have to figure it out. Your blue circle, when you see that at a connection point, it means to insert a tab and fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert the tab and twist 90 degrees. And an assembly tip, something I often recommend if needed, slightly twist a tab to hold parts together. And then later on when more of the part is together and more stable, you can untwist and fold those tab tabs over. And then recommended tools, we've got wire cutters or I would say flush cutters. Tweezers, which are I certainly use a lot of and need of those pliers which I find handy as well. At the bottom we have the two metal sheets and I'll just grab one as an example. And here we go. This is this sheet here. You can see the parts are drawn on it and the numbers pointing to the parts so you know which one is which to put it together in the assembly flow chart. Speaking of the assembly flow chart, if we slide over to page two we have, is there a third metal sheet? Oh, well, look at that. I missed a tiny little metal sheet. It was in the box still. How cute and tiny. But that's right here. I almost, that almost slipped by me. So that's a third tiny little metal sheet. How adorable. But we have beside that the start of the assembly flowchart with part one. Cur curve that. Add it to part two. Come over here. You've got part three that you're adding on here. Ending up with that. And you just follow the arrows curving, folding, attaching, and shaping as you go and adding all the parts. Once you get to the bottom, flip over to the back to page three and continue on, folding and adding parts. And then on to page four. And of course, at the end of page four, we move on to the next sheet. Inside, you have page five. And you just follow this shaping parts. Page 6, continue on. Page 7, more assembly. Page 8, you're almost done. You get to the 
bottom here and you have your completed model. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. This set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. For shaping ball shapes or dome shapes, I've got this fondant set, I believe it's called. I found it by accident, but essentially it's got different sized spears on the end of a stick. So it's easy to hold on to it while you put apart and on it and shape it around. Unlike a bead or marble that could accidentally pop out from under you and cause problems. I don't use these very often, but they sometimes come in quite handy. They're angled needle nose pliers, and I typically use them for one of two reasons. Either getting into a strange shaped area to twist a tab because of the angle. More frequently though, I use them to fold over flaps along bases or side of parts that are too long for the flat nose pliers, but needle nose pliers can't get to them safely without bending or warping something else. These will grab a longer area and bend it over. We've peeked at the instructions. We've got our two large sheets and one tiny sheet here ready for assembly. We've talked about tools that we'll use and I've got some basics to get me started. Let's uh, cut out these pieces, bend shape, and put this thing together. It sometimes takes more than one try to find the right size drill bit. I often guess a little too large and then move my way down. Careful to orient things the proper way before connecting them. Study the alignment and arrangement of the holes, tabs, and such to be sure you're putting things together the correct way.
It may help to bend the tabs to a slight angle to help them line with the slots better. I put a part on the wrong direction. That can be an easy mistake to make. Pay careful attention to part 21 and 22 and which way they face and which way to fold the curved top part. I mistakenly got it backwards and the connection holding the long strip that you curve is very thin and will break after a couple of folds. Bending it the wrong way will likely break when you go to bend it back the correct way. So be careful.
In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. Don't worry too much about the shape of part 32 just yet. A rough try will do to start. Other parts will help pull it the rest of the way into shape.
I do not know why, but I had it in my head that the upper part of the wings tabs go into the lower slots here on the side of the body. For some reason, I thought there was another piece that went underneath attaching the two wings together on the lower tabs, but such was not the case. It was later that I realized I attached the ring wing wrong and there's actually four slots for the four tabs right there.
They sometimes hate these little tabs like this that need to be bent as close and as tight as they can for them to make the connection. I wish they would score them a little to make them easier to bend, but I understand that might weaken them too much. You need to bend them as tightly as you can so that they will line up better with the slots that are available for them. It was here that I realized I had attached the wing incorrectly. I had a lot of trouble getting the tabs here to line up with their slots. I had to pretty much force them over and into place.
I present to you the Resistance Ski Speeder. A rather odd looking creation, but it's all done and complete and ready to put on display. This build took me three hours roughly to put together. That is with uh, a few mistakes that I made and having to redo some parts. As I mentioned in the, the narration in the build, there were this little tail piece on the back that sticks down. That was troublesome. A couple of the parts, I bent them over backwards the wrong way at first because I misunderstood the directions and I thought about it too much. And when I went to correct both of the pieces, both sides, both parts, whatever, the pieces broke off and I had to wait for replacement parts. And thankfully, Metal Earth did send them. They actually sent another complete model for me. I just needed the parts. It took them a while because apparently something slipped through the cracks and they forgot to send it out. But once I asked them about it, they sent it out right away. But this little tail piece, I don't know if it's a kickstand or what it is, just kind of gave me the most trouble. And getting the wings on also was, and they just didn't want to line up and I don't know why. I don't know if I did something wrong or if it's just a, a matter of the way the kit comes together, but I just had more trouble than I feel like I should have with this model. And, and it's a very odd looking thing and I've, I've basically heard a number of people just talk like they're not fond of this model. I can see why. And it's not all Metal Earth's fault, just the design of it is just bizarre and strange and just, I don't know, something about it doesn't work. Not to mention the stand is wibbly wobbly so it kind of tilts and if it tilts too much to the left, well, the weight of this thing just topples it over. So, yeah, another Metal Earth model that tends to fall over. Eh. If you're going for the complete set, you know, how can you not do it? But if you're not going for a complete set and you don't really like the look of this thing, don't bother. Eh, so what? But, hopefully that helped those of you who are looking to build it. I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you'd like to contribute to help to keep these videos coming, check out my Patreon page and consider a small donation. The link will be at the end of this video and also in the description. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.